So hello everybody, it's a great pleasure to be here today in Vienna at the campaigning summit because the campaigning summit has been played a very important role in our own transformation process. It was 2013 at the campaigning summit in Zurich. Economist, Economist Swiss, the company I'm working for, or the organization I'm working for, was in a real difficult situation. We had lost the uh, important referendum campaign, harvested criticism from media and politician. And in the years before, we tried out a number of new online solutions, new online tools, but without really convincing receipt as a result. But then at the campaigning summit, we get some really important input, some really important ideas, and we've started our journey there. And I'm very glad to share today our case with you and share some uh, uh, insights with you. But first, some words about Economy Swiss. Economy Swiss is the umbrella organization of the Swiss economy. Our uh, membership includes over uh, 100 trade and industries associations, some regional chambers of industries and commerce, and some individual members. In total, we, rec we represent uh, about 100,000 companies with 2 million jobs. We are based in Zurich, where our headquarters is, and have offices in Bern, Geneva, Lugano, and Brussels as well. And in our daily work, we represent Swiss business interests, we saw the political sphere, the media, the population, and this includes, for example, research work, media work, uh, some issue monitoring, lobbying as well, and campaigning. And today I will focus as the role of Economy Swiss as a campaign organization of the Swiss economy. We are some kind of full agency, a full service agency of the Swiss economy. Because first I have to talk a little bit about Switzerland itself. Because maybe you know, you were told at the beginning, the situation for campaigner in Switzerland is a little bit, uh, diff a little bit, uh, no because our political system, the direct democracy, makes the work of campaigner like me and my colleagues exciting, but also very challenging. Maybe a picture may help to illustrate this. These, very transparent, are my personal ballots for the, last 2000, for the first 2016 referendum. We had to take eight decisions on different, very various subjects on the national, the regional and the local level. Just three examples, maybe you've heard about that. Swiss voters said no to a referendum proposal to deport foreigners uh, who commit even minor crimes. They said yes to a second tunnel through the Mount Gotthard, the connection between the German-speaking part and the Italian-speaking part of Switzerland. And in the city of Lucerne, where I live, we had even to decide about higher funeral fees. And we said, no, <laughs> that's Switzerland. <laughs> so we have a lot of campaigns every three months. And another special situation in Switzerland. Switzerland is a small but a multilingual country. We have uh, Italian, a French, and a German-speaking part. So we have to let our campaigns in three different languages. And that's why my situation as a campaigner could you please skip to the next turn? And that's why my situation as a campaigner is somewhat different from keynote talks at conferences like this. Because often the speaker talks about that campaign, the US election campaign, uh, the US ele presidential election, maybe the Scottish referendum. And we may expect next year talks about the Brexit campaign. In contrast, at Economy Suisse, you see here the next slide, we frequently plan or lead several campaigns at once. What you see here are just the national campaigns in which I was involved over the past years. For example, we fought against higher taxes, against a minimum wage of 4,000 francs, 4,000 euros a month, the highest in the world, against higher energy taxes, just a little remark, that's the green monster over there in the, the billboard in the first row. We've, we have won this election, or this campaign, with a Soviet-style result of 
And sometimes we have even two campaigns at the same weekend. So such a large volume of campaigns has meant ever greater challenges for us, especially in the field of digital campaigning. So, for example, for each of our online campaigns, we went completely back to square one. We opened a new Facebook page, a new Twitter account, we de developed an entirely new website, and started a new search for supporters each time. And when we are looking for supporters, this is a good image for that, because we already had people interested in contributing our campaigns in the past, but we had always the same problem. If someone wanted to do something for us, this meant extra work for us, because we couldn't handle this. A little example, I remember a campaign in 2013. We have won this, it was Sunday, there was a little party, and I tried to send a thank you email to three or 400 supporters. The problem was I failed because my email client couldn't handle this. Or another little problem you see here in ad we published in a campaign 2010 against higher taxes. The men here were at this time the presidents of the leading Swiss business federations. And this illustrates another challenge for campaign organizations in Switzerland, because when you run several campaigns at the same moment or at the year, the biggest danger is that it will feature the same faces as the last time. So typically politicians and other officials shape the look of our campaigns. And we had really problems to find normal people like you and me to contribute in our campaigns. So we spent a lot of time to find workers and retired people and students and uh, maybe farmers or nurses to join our campaigns. So that's why we have started several projects to transform our campaign organization to the need of the 21st century, to the need of the digital age. And you see here some of our first ideas. Of course, it's a problem of technology. We need more tools, better tools, new tools. And, oh, everybody's talking about big data, so let's collect as much data as possible. Or, okay, we need a big Facebook community. The more fans, the better. These were our first ideas, and they were not all bad, but they just didn't often really work. For example, we invested in some technologi technological aids, some new tools, which we often didn't use because no one had the time or the ideas or the passion to manage them. So, and that was at the campaigning summit in 2013 in Zurich. We get some very important inputs and we, re we recognized that technology will not solve our problems. Tools, big data or Facebook won't be the solution. Our key learning was we had to rethink our methods, our approach. So what have we done? On the one hand side, we invested in technology. Technology is very important. We uh, bought a new strong database, a cool newsletter tool, a landing page builder. But that was just the base for our uh, transforming process because the really exciting thing was going on in our heads. And that's what I'm going to talk in the remaining minutes. Before becoming a campaigner, I worked almost 10 years as a journalist for traditional Swiss newspapers. And when I look back, there was one cardinal principle at this time. It was be first, but first be right. Everything had to be double checked because once it was printed, there was no way to correct it. And this, this pressure to get everything perfect was hard to get rid of once I've become a campaigner. So we spent hours and days to find the perfect formulation for a video, for a Facebook post, or a strategy paper. But then, because maybe we forgot the marketing, and only 10,000 people saw a video, and it had a very low impact. So the most important lesson was try it out. Test it, 
discard what doesn't work and try it again because you have nothing to lose and it will pay off. And so we changed our motto and that's a little bit our new motto. It's, I think it's, a, it's from Facebook that done is better than perfect. So in the past, we always started our campaigns at the same, with the same simple goal. Okay, guys, this time we make it really, really simple to join us. Okay, let's just ask for an email address. Okay, an email address is enough to join us. Then the colleague said, okay, great idea, but mm, shouldn't we have a name to the email address so we can put a list with all supporters on our website? That's important for the credibility of the campaign. And at the end, we always had the same form with 10 lines people had to fill in to join our campaign. And that's the real problem because no one is prepared to fill in the form to join a campaign, to join a movement. The first step has to be as simple as possible. And so today, we try to create our campaigns really simple. Normally, an email address, maybe a zip code is enough to join our movement, to get a supporter of our campaign. And it was this simple thing that enabled us to increase the number of supporters by factor between 10 and 15. And I'm not talking about 10 or 15 percent, I'm talking about factor 10 and 15. And good news, when you have found these low level supporters, and I was really uh, happy to see this uh, engagement paramount, because we're working with the same uh, thinking, with the same methods. When you have found these low-level uh, supporters, you can start working with them. You can recruit testimonials or ambassadors or even activists uh, entering a boat and uh, drive to the Arctis. But the first step has to be as simple as possible. And now one of my favorite uh, subjects you've, you've talked about, the connection between online and offline. Because in Switzerland, it's unfortunately still very often the case that online and offline are planned completely separately. It's possible that in Switzerland you plan a campaign and at the end somebody say, okay, we should add some social media or some online campaign to this campaign. And we had to learn that the campaign really comes to life when the two worlds, the online world and the offline worlds, meet. And I picked two little examples for you. Uh, we've done in, 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 in our campaigns. On the right hand side, you see uh, uh, a little thing during a campaign in 2014. We campaigned against an initiative on the part of the trade unions to uh, introduce the world's highest minimum wage. And what have we done? We just quickly booked a billboard in front of the trade union's headquarters, and then we asked our community to create and to choose the slogan for this billboard. Or a very simple uh, example on the left-hand side. In another campaign, before an important TV debate, we supplied our uh, candidate at the TV debate with the best arguments that had resulted from a poll of our supporters. And here you can see the photographic proof we've posted online because that's, uh, I think, a really important point. When people are doing something for you, they want to see that this, that her engagement has a real impact uh, on the real life. And if you can't show them these proofs, they will stop uh, supporting you. Now, that's an interesting uh, subject, I think, even in Austria. Because in the past, we wrote emails like this to our supporters. For the non-German-speaking uh, people here, it's some kind of, some style of, dear Mr. Miller or dear Dr. Miller, sorry for disturbing you. We would really appreciate if you have maybe 10 minutes of time, but sorry, as a, a really, really polite form. And we discussed this for weeks. Is it okay? for a campaign organization for, bis for Swiss business interests to address our supporters in a more familiar form. And we decided to do so. And uh, this sounds very small, but it had a big e effect because after this, this, this decision, 
we realize how difficult it is to activate people by sending them emails like this, because language can be an immense barrier. And today, even CEOs of multinationals, politicians or other officials get emails like this. Hello, we are in Austria. Hello, France. Order now. Join now. Are you in? We need you. And this small step worked wonder because it has made it possible to us to say what we want. Order, join, sign up. And it has led to an explosion of orders for advertising material, just to uh, say one example. Now to finish the most important question, did it pay off? And I wasn't sure at the beginning of our process because we did really a lot of negative experiences. But today, I can really say, yes, it did. Because today we are able to count of thousands, with the help of thousands of supporters in our campaign. They provide us with feedback, share our ideas, our content, or, for example, order our uh, advertising material. And above all, we recognize today as a campaign organization that is ready for the digital age and in touch with what people think and feel. And of course, today our campaigns look completely different. We have now today no problems to find hundreds or thousands of uh, testimonials for our campaigns. People like you and me, young and old, And the second important effect, our campaigns are much more sustainable. Today, a new campaign starts frequently, directly on the Sunday of the previous referendum. But just posing a simple question, can we count on you the next time? So you see here an uh, example from the campaign called Ecopop. This was a referendum proposal to stop immigration to Switzerland. Uh, well, just knocked this down in uh, November 2014. And with this uh, sign-up page and the uh, email, we were, able to, oh, sorry. we were able to recruit many new supporters for our uh, latest campaign. Maybe you have a look on it. Maybe you join our movement. And my talk ends with the most important words for campaigners today. Are you in? So thank you very much for your attention.